Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the One Word Podcast. I am Pastor Iron Petrie, and I'm so thankful that you have chosen to take the time out of your Friday to spend a little time in the Word of God. Listen, uh, if you know of somebody right now that needs to hear, you see the subject matter we're going to be talking about, that needs to hear anything uh, along these lines, go ahead and share this podcast with your family, your friends, your loved ones. Let them know that somebody is talking about something that is relevant to their life situation. And so once again, so glad to have you on, glad to have our church family on that follow us. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, you can go ahead and do that. That's Christ Nations Church. Uh, Our YouTube channel is, and you can follow us. So we welcome you if this is your first time finding us. For those of you who are family already, who are members already, who follow us on our YouTube channel, welcome back. And we're just so glad to have you. Uh, And as you saw in the title, we're going to be talking about tests today. We're going to be talking about temptations. We're going to be talking about trials, dealing with the different things that come at us in this life. And um, I know there's one thing every viewer on this podcast and that is listening to this podcast has in common with me. You're going through a test. <laughs> if, you, if you're listening to me, if you're watching me, we have this in common. So we're in the same boat together. So what I'm going to talk to you about is something that I have to preach to myself often because if you are alive and there's blood running through your veins, you are being tested, and so am I. And so it would behoove both of us to learn how to overcome these things so that they don't overcome us. Because the Bible does tell us we can overcome temptations, we can overcome tests, we can overcome trials. There's a way to do it, and there's also some understanding that we have to gain in order to do so. But I want you to be victorious. I'll pray, and I know that you're hoping I'm going to be victorious. And guess what? We're going to be victorious together in this. But I want to draw your attention to basically just three verses of Scripture uh, to to start this conversation off. Now, this is the One Word Podcast, so I don't do anything without, first of all, trying to fasten every discussion down to a foundation scripturally, to the Word of God, so that you can see that the Word of God is telling you this, so that it's not just me talking uh, and being a talking head on another podcast or something or other, which is fine, but I want to make sure that you understand this is the Word of God to you. Now, notice what this says, and this is James chapter 1, verse number 2 and 3, and um What I find very amusing sometimes, when I read scripture, sometimes I laugh, Uh, of course you cry, you have, I have just a full-blown emotional experience with the Word of God from one end of the spectrum to the next, because sometimes you can see humor uh, in the Word of God in places, and this is one of those places where I find it very humorous, that when James is writing this letter, um, and of course he's writing this letter to a particular group of believers that are the diaspora that are spread abroad. And so he's writing to them and he has a particular aim and he's led by the spirit to write. We know all of that, but I find it humorous that he starts off this very uh, book, the first chapter, second verse. I mean, he's only a few sentences in, if, if a few. And he says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. So he starts right off telling us the type of attitude and the disposition we're to have when we fall into diverse temptations. And since that's where James starts, that's where I want to start with us. The first thing you have to understand about a test is the attitude you possess in the middle of it. This will make all the difference in the world how long the test is, And whether or not you come out on top, your attitude, your disposition, when it comes to being tested, means everything. And James says, count it joy. So in other words, he says, when you walk into a test, when you go into a trial, when you're going into a temptation, you don't go into it like everybody else in the world. Most people see test, temptation, trial as something to 
to just sorrow over or to, to hang their head over. Or, oh, my God, another thing. If it ain't one thing, it's another. Oh, my goodness. And people just sit back and they just, co- they just, they just collapse over tests and trials. But James here says, when you and I, as children of God who believe in God's word, trust Jesus, children of God, we do not face tests and trials with the same disposition, the same attitude. When we're hit with a test, (laughs) and I know this seems counterintuitive to you, when we're hit with a test, when we're hit with a trial, we count it joy. What? We count it joy joy. We look at the test and we say, all right, here we go. I mean, we get excited, not not in a fake, phony, put it on kind of way about the test of trial, but we understand something. This is another opportunity to prove God's word. Notice what James goes on to say. He says, my brother, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this knowing that the trying of your faith worketh patience or consistency, constancy, makes you consistent, makes you some person who is able to endure. So he's saying you're going to get something out of this test. So if you know this, you will count it joy. If you don't know you're going to get something good out of this test or this challenge, this temptation, then you're not going to count it joy. And this is what trips a lot of people up because they see a test coming and they don't know that something's good, something good's coming out of it. If you endure, something good is going to come out of this test because every time you pass a test, you get stronger, you get bolder, you, you get a deepening of your faith in God concerning his word and his promise to you. And so whenever a test comes, it's like, oh, man, this, this is, I'm going to get something out of this. This is another opportunity for me to prove the word of God. Man, I like that. Knowing this, that the trying of my faith, the testing of my faith, work with patience. There's another thing I want you to see in this verse of scripture that's right there in front of us that sometimes escapes us. It says, my brother, and count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. We would say diverse, uh, different. I believe in the Greek language when James is writing there, he's talking about, uh, it uses the, the, it gives a definition of something being variegated or different, multicolored, almost like a rainbow. So he's saying to us, count it all joy when you fall into all kinds of different types of tests. And how many of you know there are so many different types of tests? Most people only think about testing when it comes to the flesh. They think about sexual temptation. Uh, But there's more than sexual tests and sexual temptations. There are more than body temptations and tests. There are tests in your mind and the way you think, whether you're going to think the right way. There are tests, there are actually, and here's the thing people don't talk much about, there are tests that come from God. Now, they're not the same as Satan's test, but God does test. Now, people say, now, Pastor, wait a minute now, because we faith people, we believe God's word, we trust his word, absolutely we do. We follow God, yes, we do. We believe his promises are yes and amen, absolutely doesn't change the fact that within the word of God, it tells us emphatically that God will prove us. He tests us, but there is a very distinct difference, boy, as, as far as the east is from the west, between God's testing and Satan's testing. It goes on to tell us in verse 12 of that same chapter, let me say this, read this to you before I say what I'm about to say. It says, blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. And then it goes on to tell us that God doesn't, he can't be tempted with evil and that he tempts no man with evil. So God doesn't test anybody with evil. If you're being tempted with evil or sin, that's not coming from God. If you're being tempted with um, sickness, disease, disasters, uh, tragedies, calamity, that's not God. God doesn't test us with those things. Those things come from Satan 
and living on a cursed and fallen planet. That's, that's where that comes from. That doesn't come from God. So Satan tempts with evil. He's the sole complete, he's the sole proprietor of evil. And when it comes to temptation, he's the owner of that. So anything that is destructive, that is uh, an invitation to sin, anything that is evil or oppressive, that is satanic. That is coming from the devil. So how does God test then? So if Satan tests with evil, God then tests with good. And you say, well, how can that be a test? Oh, that's very simple. Satan tests with evil. God tests with opportunity. God will prove you, test you with things he gives to you. Because he wants you to grow in your stewardship your understanding of faith and trust. You remember in Deuteronomy chapter 8, I believe it's verse 4, and the Bible talks about how God said he led the children of Israel out into the wilderness to humble them, to prove them, or to test them, to, to know what was in their heart, whether they would serve God or no. And so he caused them to hunger and then fed them with manna. So he wasn't causing them to hunger, so they'd die. He wasn't trying to starve them. But what was he doing? The Bible says that he might show to them that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So for God, the whole proving was to show you you can trust him. And it was also to show you you. You know, if God never showed you you, you would always blame him for everything that didn't work out. So, so, he, so he has to show you yourself. He has to let you know where you are, where you at how you are, how you think. <laughs> he shows you who you are. Or you would always be fussing at God. You'd always be blaming him. You'd always say, God, why don't you, do, you didn't do this. And God, you didn't do that. So the father is wise. He is, he is beyond wise. Wisdom doesn't even, it doesn't even describe our father and his omniscience. So he shows you you. He showed Israel themselves. So Israel could see who they were see where they are in him, and so that he could also teach them they could trust him. All he wanted to do was prove himself to Israel. They can trust him for their clothes, their food, their protection, their provision. They could trust him for everything, and he would be a God to them. And God is the same way with his children today, even in Christ Jesus after the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior. And we can be born again, filled with his spirit. The father is still wanting to prove to his children we can trust him with everything. And so in order to do so, he has to prove us. He has to test us. He has to try us so that we can grow in trust and we can grow in our leaning and depending on him. But that's not what the devil does. Satan comes to tempt you to destroy you. Now, what I find interesting, and we're not going to be able to get into all of this and unpack all of this in this one podcast. I guess I'll probably have to do this in parts. But um, one of the things that's very important for you to come to understand and know when it comes to temptation, and let's deal with temptation from Satan's side first. We'll get to God and his test and his proving of us and his growing of our faith probably later. But let's deal with the devil because this is where a lot of people live. This is where a lot of people are. They're dealing with all kinds of tests and, and circumstances and trials and obstacles that they're, they're trying to overcome. Know this about the devil. He is not omniscient. Okay? So he doesn't know everything. Let's, uh, let's establish this as well. He doesn't also know you. He doesn't. No, he doesn't. And I'll prove it to you by the very fact we're talking about temptation. The word to tempt or to try, it means to really see what can be accomplished. If you were to look it up, if you were to read in Matthew chapter 4, where it talks about Jesus being tempted in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, you'll find within that text the word tempt, where the Satan came to tempt him. It means to see what can be done or to see what can be accomplished. So temptation really is a fact-finding mission for Satan. It's reconnaissance. It's data gathering, information gathering. So when Satan throws something out at you, 
and he tests you, tempts you with something. He's attempting to see, hear me, child of God. He's attempting to see what you will allow him to do. He's trying to find out what you will let him get away with. This is why the Bible tells us it's a very profound scripture that requires us to sit with and really meditate on because it gives us insight into all of our interactions with Satan, whether we know it or not. And it's in Ephesians 4 and 27 where it tells me, neither give place to the devil. Now, wait a minute. That, that's, that tells me that I have the power and the freedom to either give or withhold place from Satan in my life. It tells me that he can't just freely waltz into my life when he wants. It tells me he can't just overrun me, overcome me when he wants. It lets me know that he's truly defeated. Because here, God tells me through the Apostle Paul, writing to the church at Ephesus, you have the power to give him no place, no position of opportunity. That I can keep every door closed, every window locked to Satan entering into my life. I have that power. I have that authority. You have that power and authority. Sometimes we don't know we have that type of authority. A lot of times if we're not careful as Christians, we live as though we're at Satan's mercy. We're kind of like we're just, we're just at his whim. Whatever he wants to do, he can do it. Well, no, he can't do it because then First Peter doubles down on what Ephesians tells me and says, Satan roams about seeking whom he may devour. So now if he's seeking whom he may devour, that means, it's pretty obvious, he can't devour anybody he wants to when he wants to how he wants to. He doesn't have that freedom. For this purpose, John, 1 John 3, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. God, Jesus has left Satan completely defeated. Not sort of, <laughs> not kind of, not just on Sundays. No, he's defeated every day of the week. He's defeated 24-7, 365. There is not one thing left of Satan's kingdom that Jesus did not put underfoot. That's absolute, child of God. That is complete. And then he turns and gives the authority of his name over to you. Then he gives you his spirit and gives you this position in him of having the ability to give Satan no place. So I can literally tell Satan where to stand, where to go, where to get, where to be, where not to be. I have that authority. And the church, every Christian, has got to understand that. You are not being overwhelmed or overcome by an adversary you're no match for. No, he's no match for you when you know who you are. And so these are things, as James says, that we have to know. <laughs> Knowing this. See, when you know things like this, you enter into tests that he comes at you with with joy. Because you know this is another opportunity for you to spank him. For you to let him know who you are, whose you are, and what you have, right? And so we, we have this authority, we have this ability. So Satan then, seeking whom he may, Satan then not being able to take place, but place has to be given to him, he resorts to particular methods, one of which is temptation and diverse temptations. So he comes to us and he solicits us. Um, he solicits us uh, with all kinds of <laughs> things that appeal to our flesh. And all of these things are his attempt to see if he can get an inroad into your life. He will tempt you sexually. He will tempt you with things like offense, jealousy, envy, he will come at you through television. He'll come at you through the printed page. He will come at you through uh, relationships with people and friends and loved ones, even church members. And he will come at you at every different avenue that's available to him to see if you will open the door and give him place. And Satan is a very, he's a very aggressive salesman. He, he's like those guys, you know, they, they tell you, 
I think they teach this in sales when people have to do sales and they go door to door, you know, and they come to the door. They're, they're always working to get you to let them across the threshold because they know if they can get their foot in the door, the the likelihood of you buying what they're selling goes up dramatically. If if you keep them outside the door, they know that uh, they're not going to get the chance to sell you anything. And so we've all gotten savvy when people come to our door. We don't even open it. <laughs> we we just look at people through the window, through the peephole, and be like, uh, they're like they're selling something. I don't know them, so you don't open your door. But when when they would sell door to door in the years you know prior, you know people would come knocking on the door selling all kinds of things, you know. They were always working to try to get their foot in the door because they knew if I could get in the door, I can get them to buy it. Satan is the same way. He will stand at that door and he will talk and talk and talk and talk and present every rationalization to you possible to get you to give him place, get you to open the door, get you to let him step across the threshold. And when he does that, he knows, okay, now I'm in the door. I believe I can sell them on what I'm trying to peddle and get into their life, a position of opportunity to do more. And so Satan, this is something you have to understand. And I say this, uh, I say this to my wife all the time, and, and uh, we talk about this in our home. The Bible says in John 10.10, 10, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, kill, destroy. It says, if Satan shows up, he's showing up to steal, kill, or destroy. So if the devil is talking, he's stealing. If he's talking, he's stealing. There is never a time when you're entertaining a thought that is coming from the devil where it is not to steal something, kill something, or destroy something. So if you're hearing, see, these are things you need to know. This is, this, this is what empowers you when you're dealing with tests and temptations. Whenever you gain a thought, I don't care what that thought is. I don't care what type of uh, diverse temptation this may be. If it's coming from him, He's attempting to steal, kill, or destroy. So when you know this, it makes you bold to resist it. Because no matter how he dresses that thought up to be catering to your wants, needs, and desires, you know ultimately this came to steal, this came to kill, this came to destroy. See, this is why I don't entertain a lot of things the enemy, when I was younger in the, in the faith and I didn't know any better, I entertained everything. God, God knows. We, we, we were all in the same boat. We were entertaining all kinds of things, all kinds of thoughts, all kinds of temptations. We were listening to people we had no business listening to. We were following things we had no business following. But as I've gotten older and wiser and grown in the faith, I can see the devil much further away now than I used to be able to. Thanks be it to God for, for, for ability to see afar off. <laughs> I, can, I can see him coming now from a long way away. It, he used to have to, he'd get right up on me. He would surprise me sometimes when I was younger because I didn't understand his tactics. I didn't understand what he was doing. But as I've come to learn, if he's talking, he's stealing. If he's talking, he's killing. If he's talking, he's destroying. I can see him a mile away. I know when a conversation is going off the rails a mile away. And I know, oh, I don't need to entertain that conversation. I don't need to be on the phone with this person. I don't need to be even responding to that email. I don't even need to be saying anything because I can see it a mile away where it's going and what he's attempting to do. Because he's always running recon on the child of God. He's always fact-finding. He's always information gathering. That's what temptation is all about. It's to see what you will allow. And if you don't know these things or particular things from the word of God, you will look up and you will have allowed him to do so much more in your life than he ever should have been able to do. And you'll swear up and down, I don't know why God won't just, I don't know, you know, I, why don't God just answer my prayer? Why? why? Because he won't answer it because the devil is your responsibility. He said, don't you give place to him. He didn't say ask him to keep him from getting place. He said, no, you give him no place. So 
we, we find ourselves in these tests, in these trials, in these temptations, not finding a way out of them because we don't know our responsibility and our authority in the middle of the test. But just like James says, when we do know these things, man, now we can count it all joy because we're going to come out of this smelling like a rose. <laughs> it's going to be just fine. So Satan comes with these tests. He comes to discover what he can get away with in your life. So now let's say, for example, you're there um, and you're just worshiping God, loving Jesus. You're a child of God and you're you're living the life and you're walking upright before God. And like uh, it, it's almost like a bug, uh, like a little insect or something. A thought will just run across your head. <laughs> Maybe you're married and it's a thought of unfaithfulness, to be unfaithful. Maybe maybe you're trying to have integrity in your finances and it's a thought to cut corners financially and do something on your job or in your business or or with your money behind your spouse's back. Maybe you're sitting there, what, whatever the temptation may be, this thought comes at your mind. Now, a lot of people at that moment, when that thought comes, some people, depending upon their level of understanding about these things and their level of understanding concerning spiritual warfare, get condemned immediately. They think, man, I'm thinking that. I shouldn't be thinking that. Well, you're not thinking that. That's not your thought. That's not yours. That is Satan's attempt to see what can be done. It's an invitation. He's, it's, it's a solicitation to you. It's a proposition to you. It's not your thought. Well, I mean, I just, I've been thinking these thoughts, Pastor. And he can become very incessant with these thoughts, and he can fire them at you. The Bible calls them fiery darts. He can fire them at you in successive fashion. I mean, rapid fire, semi-automatic, you know, and they're coming at you. And they can last for minutes. They can last for days. They can last for weeks. People can wrestle with thoughts for a very long time. And they'll sit there, and they'll come to you, and they'll, they'll say, I don't know why I'm thinking this, man. I just, these thoughts keep coming. Those are not your thoughts. The first thing you have to understand, they're not yours. They are, they are Satan trying to see, will you let me across the threshold of your door? Will you let me in? Will you let me accomplish the work of stealing, killing, and destroying? Remember, if he's talking, he's stealing. And so he comes at you, and he feels like, if he feels like he can overwhelm you with lots and lots of thoughts, and to really just be very rapacious and keep coming, and that you'll give in, he will try that method. And people will think, because this is what he's a master at, he's a master at getting you to believe it's you. Getting you to think it's all you. Look at you. And that's why he comes with condemnation. And, and, and he comes to, to overwhelm you with this idea that you're rotten, you're no good, you're thinking these thoughts, you're a bad person, you should be further along than where you are right now, you're thinking this way, and oh, look at you, you haven't grown a bit, you haven't, <laughs> you haven't, done, you haven't grown in the word at all, you're going to that church now, and you're hearing the, the Bible, and you're worshiping, but look at you, you're, you're not doing anything, and he comes with accusation, and he comes with all of this heavy pressure on the mind to get you to think it's you, but it's not you. It's not you. No, that's why the Bible says, give no place to the devil. So that means he's going to be seeking place, right? And so as he's seeking a place in you, you've got to learn how to differentiate what's him and what's you. You know who you are. You know what you believe. You know what your heart's desire is. So anything that goes against that, that is righteous, you have to know that's not you. That's him. And so it's knowing these things that give you power in the midst of the test. If you start believing, oh, this is me, I'm thinking this, oh, man, he's got one step closer to going across the threshold and getting in your house. But you don't want to let him in your house, right? You don't want him to get in there because now the opportunity to push you further increases. And so he comes at you with all of these propositions, and he comes at you with all of these things. Now, let me stop for a moment, and let me, let me share this with you just before we end this podcast, because this is very important. When you go back to the book of Genesis, 
and you see the temptation of Eve, right, in Genesis chapter 3. God is so good. He is so good to us. Because really in that one temptation, the initial test, the initial temptation of man, you see Satan's M.O. forever. You see his his modus operandi, if you would, his methodology, his wiles. You see his actions forever. He comes to Eve, and Eve sees this tree. Now, they have knowledge, they have instruction, they have command from God not to eat it, right? That's the word of God to them. Do not eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Don't eat off of it. And Satan comes to Eve and says to her, God knows. The reason he said don't eat of that tree is God knows that in the day that you eat of it, you're going to be like him. And you're going to know good and evil. You're going to be wise. And he dresses up this temptation to eat this tree as gain. I'm going to say that again, as gain. So we have Eve who looks at this tree, and the Bible goes on to say she saw it as a tree to be desired to make one wise. Undoubtedly, they had desire, because the tree had fruit on it, to eat of the tree. But it's when Satan comes with this justification, this rationalization for why she should eat it, that she fails. The Bible tells us very clearly in James that man is not is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and, and enticed or baited. Hear me. In every temptation, these things exist. This exists in your life, my life, and everybody in between. There is desire. But desire alone is not what causes people to follow the temptations of the enemy. They may have a desire for a whole lot of things. They have a desire for more money. They have desire for someone physically. They can have desire for power. They can have desire for fame. They can have desire for more, period, right? But desire alone isn't it. They can have the desire, but Satan comes along and accompanies that desire with a rationalization. And this is where people get whooped. (laughs) This is where we get defeated. We listen to his rationalization, his justification for why you should act on the desire. And if you can defeat him at at the level of the rationalization and the justification he's trying to sell to you, you will more than likely not follow the desire because you know when the desire isn't right. You know when it's not right. Let's take, for example, classically, a classic example where you're a married man or woman. You're inside of a marriage, and somebody presents themselves to you in life, and they present themselves to you in life with uh, maybe they're attractive physically, maybe you vibe with them emotionally, intellectually, and so forth, and so there's a connection. Maybe you met them on your job, or you met them where you frequent at the gym, or where you wherever you are. You met this person, and you know this person is not your spouse, and you know you're married, and so your heart is for, for your spouse. Your heart is towards your marriage, and you're wanting to to live right. You're wanting to do right by your spouse, but you run into this person that has presented now a temptation, a test, a desire has arisen. Man, we get along. Man, they're attractive. And and nine times out of ten, at home, there's friction. There's friction in different areas because marriage is always about building and work, right? So maybe there's friction at home. Maybe there was an argument that was just had. Maybe there was a disagreement that you guys are having that's really a long-term, long-standing disagreement. And so, just like the devil, he brings along somebody very nice and attractive in the midst of a test in your own home. <laughs> he's, he's wicked that way, okay? So right when you're going through a challenge, going through a trial, he brings someone else. Or, for example, we can, we can, we can wrap it up because I want this to be relevant to people. You can be married, 
and let's say in your marriage, there is a lack of intimacy in that marriage where the two of you as a married couple are not very intimate and, and it's been a long time and you guys are struggling to connect physically, you're struggling to connect emotionally, you're struggling to connect uh, intellectually as well. And so there's a lack of intimacy. So Satan brings along this person who, who checks all these boxes, all this criteria. Now, instead of enduring the test in, at home and fixing it so that you and your spouse can come back together, here's this temptation that provides an easier out to intimacy, right? So now you have this desire. The desire itself comes from you because you're flesh. You're flesh and blood. You're filled with the Holy Spirit. You're full of the word of God. You're washed in the blood. You're saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, <laughs> baptized. <laughs> you're all of those things. That's wonderful. But the one thing that you still are in the midst of those things is flesh. You're a flesh. Okay, and so one day, this corruption will put on incorruption, and thanks be unto God when it happens, but you're still flesh, so you still have to deal with the body. You still have to deal with the carnal man, and so you have this desire in the flesh, and in the flesh, it's appealing. The desire is drawing you outside of your home, but that's not what gets you to ultimately go outside of the home. What gets you to move outside of the home and act on that desire is here comes the devil, sitting down with you and giving you every rationalization, every justification for why you should. You owe it to yourself. Do you see how your spouse is treating you? Do you see it is never going to change? It hadn't changed in five years, so it ain't ever going to change. He said that he was going to change the last time. She said she was going to stop doing that the last time. And look, she's doing it again. It's never, And he continues to bombard your mind with every reasoning for why you should act. And if a person allows their desire to be watered by Satan's rationale, the desire will grow up into an act. I hope that makes sense to you. My wife is in the studio. Was that good? Did that make sense to you? <laughs> I got to check with her. So it will grow up into an act. If you allow him to water that desire with his justifications and rationalizations, you go from desire to acting. And the moment you step into acting now, you've committed sin. But here's the thing, child of God. Remember what I told you. If he's talking, he's stealing. If he's talking, he's killing. If he's talking, he's destroying. That act is not going to lead, just like with Eve, to you gaining anything he caused you to believe you were going to gain. <laughs> no, you are not. You are headed for loss. You're going to lose either health, wealth, marriage, and sometimes things can be even fatal and people can prematurely lose their own life because he's coming to steal. He is not coming to give you a good time. He's not coming for you to have fun. He's not coming to give you an outlet from all of the drama you're facing. <laughs> you know, he's not. He's coming to steal. If he's tempting you to steal money, to embezzle funds from a business or a church or in some type of thing. He's not trying to, you, you're not going to come out on the other end of that better. He is going to steal from you. He is going to take from you. In the end, you're going to lose the money. You're going to lose health, strength, life, family, respect, reputation, business, church, ministry. You're going to lose credibility. He is going to steal from you because he does not come but for to steal. The thief does not come to your house to vacuum your carpet. They don't show up in the middle of the night to water your lawn. They're not coming to do anything <laughs> for you. They're coming to take. And so anytime Satan shows up, he's aiming to take. Child of God, when we know these things, we're able to successfully stand against the wiles of the devil. I don't know about you, but I don't want him stealing nothing from me. Everything God gave me, everything God has for me, God 
spilled his blood for me to have this rich inheritance that I have in him. And I'm not letting him steal anything from me. And you have to know some things, though, to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil because they are very, very calculating. They're very it's it's very evil genius that he that he uh, executes against the child of God. I like to tell uh, people of God this all the time. They have to understand that Satan, the adversary you're dealing with, you're not dealing with someone who overpowers you with strength. You're dealing with a sinister intelligence. You're not, you're not dealing with power. You're dealing with intelligence. You're dealing with a master manipulator. And so you've got to gird up your mind. That's a Bible term, gird up, right? You've got to, you've got to fortify your thought life. Fortify your mind with God's word and with the knowledge of these things so that you know something when you go into a temptation. Because you're going to be tempted. He, he has the right to tempt you. You can give him place or not, but he has the right to tempt you. So he's going to see what he can get away with. You can't, you can't pray that away. You can't bind that up. You can't stop that from happening. He has the right to coexist here on earth with us, and he's going to see what he can get away with. You've got to fortify yourself spiritually and mentally so that you can stand against those things and give him no place. And the way you do it is knowing these things things. Man, I'm just getting started on this, so I'm going to have to slow down. I'm going to have to stop for a moment and bring this one to a close. But um, stay tuned, because in the next podcast, I'm going to get into this a little bit deeper, and I'm going to talk about testing as it pertains to God's Word and what Satan likes to do with the Word of God in your life as well. And then we're going to move over into that stage and where we're dealing with how God proves and tests us. That's the good stuff. Okay, that's the real, real good stuff. But we're not ready to get there yet because I realize people are fighting, they're battling, they're struggling in their marriage, they're struggling in their finances, they're struggling with their flesh, their bodies, and desires they have in their carnal nature. And this is where Satan is gaining the advantage over people in their lives. But the Bible tells me that even in the midst of these evil tests, I can count it all joy knowing this that God is working patience in me, and if I know who I am and I know these things that I've talked about here today, I know how to face these tests with joy and overcome them. Child of God, that's not you thinking that thought. That's not you feeling that way. That's your adversary trying to see what he can accomplish, and you have the authority to give him no place. God bless you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for taking the time out of your Friday. I pray this has been enlightening. I pray that this has been instructive as well in giving you some tools to be able to fight the adversary so that you can win in your life. God bless you. Until next time, I'll see you then.